there is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. I know you do, baby. I know. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. All right. Nothing town to fuck all, borough. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice can name a motor carriage. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap! It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie, with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Whatever it is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God, you can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. 
You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Please promise yourself you are not going to try it on any of the ladies, whatever happens. You liar. You can't even tell the truth to yourself. Go ahead. Try something. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Something you've done before. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Like the green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Congratulations! You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? This person also forced the drinks on you. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh... No. The young woman shakes her head slowly. Officer could be an artistic statement, a claim to official renown. No, you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. 
couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking, but do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. Could it be because of the drinking? She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired, her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you've said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Yes. The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast, I can't say about the rest of the city. You're in a hostel, sir. We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. Yeah. It's 51. The current century? Centuries don't have numbers, they have names. And this is the current one. Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. Yeah? Glad to have been of assistance. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told.
Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Okay then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Then we should ask him for a rundown of the area. Get me up to speed. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Right. And the interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest, and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Mm-hmm. So, the body is still in the tree, where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. And then, soon after, dead bodies would be dangling from all the trees. But first, we have to take it down. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Inspectorate General means internal affairs. What he's saying is, he's not from the Rat Squad, and isn't supposed to suspect such things. Yes, but I'm not them. I'm from Criminal Investigation. Yes. They're not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM, and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage. But again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Yes? A man in his late twenties with a thin, unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41? 
Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before ask him if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocents Franco Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind, 5th century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. Is it because I thought you were supposed to be investigating the lynching, not my employer conduct? Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Uh, oh, people are saying it was the union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dog workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. I hope it is. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or... Inter Isoleri Real is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. 
That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. What are you, a philosopher? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. You mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? I don't think so. The Union squeezed most places out of business to fund the strike. You're better off home. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. You don't really know, do you? South, maybe, doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can... Of course. Where to? Oh, that... That's right there, in the yard. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the spring air. No problem. She's very well composed back straight. Me? I am just a gardener. She hides it well, but behind the sweat and dirt there is something else in her rigid posture. Is there? The quickness of the reply certainly does not prove you wrong. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. Well... As you already know, there's a corpse there, hanging from a tree. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Salts? Ammonium salts? Perhaps useful for later. Of course. I won't hold you back. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. 
Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. Maybe more than twelve. No. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. 5. Another standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. 6. An aberration, light as air, even pace, same make of boot, but number 41. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it and the tracks burn in the middle of it, in a strange, beautiful way. 7. The glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46, but the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. 8. And yet another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? I was pretty off then. I can't hit 20. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? A woman? Or a kid? Okay. How do you know? He knows it's hard to discern sex from a person's gait. Understood. Anything else? 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Possibly, yes. But why? Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. You have a point there. Anyway, it's something to consider. What else can you see? Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it, we are not looking for a drummer. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. He doesn't seem to hear you, looking south toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam, see whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Mm hmm A week, maybe? 
Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashon. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. This is easy. The lieutenant's eyes narrow. He's thinking to himself. Either way, what else? The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It's okay to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me! Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno! Pig's come to take me in! I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno! Going away for life! What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. Kuno's got this. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, Napa Gumpy Kuno! Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Kuno's riding at sea. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. You will see. The language these kids are using. Pu the fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f***s, Kuno! Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit! Fucking entrapment shit! Fast. This kid has got street smarts. Alright. Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got! The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno! This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows what you meant. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno? Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. 
Kuna wasn't in Revachol. Kuna wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuna was in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Yeah. Kuno didn't smoke him, if that's what you mean. Thanks, Kuno. That's one name you can now cross off the list. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? No, it's not fucking Kuno's. It's ancient. Look at it. He thinks you're fucking full, Kuno. He says you climb the ladder up to your magic treehouse. Get the fuck out of here, pig. Kuno doesn't have a magic treehouse. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third-person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are there in Kuno! Somebody, please! How did we get here? How did this happen? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The nearly psychopathic way they could slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. No one? Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! Fucking logical! <laughs> Help! The logical pig is fiddling Kuno! You put him up to this yourself, when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Listen to your f friend? Help! <laughs> the RCM is trying to fuck Kuno in the eye! Look f For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace up his sleeve. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that, I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. Relax. He can't read your mind. He doesn't know you were thinking that. There's a dead body, remember? That's what you were doing here. You're a cop on a case. I know what you thought. I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut that shit down. You know what? You should've, because now... You're nothing! You're a joke to Kuno! Kuno laughs at you! King Kuno! Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch! You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno! No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever! A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. <laughs> 